FishTankTV.com, YouTube, what's going on? Coming at you with another educational video. Note that I said FishTankTV.com this time. Um, I am back on FishTankTV and a lot of people got mad at me because I left. And I'm about to tell you why I left and why I'm back. Well, I was asking for, from FishTankTV about two weeks or something like that. I don't know. But I knew something was about to go down and I didn't know when. But I knew it was going to happen very soon, so I got the hell out of there because I didn't want to get mixed up in the crossfire. Um, there was a lot of rumors going around, and I don't need to say it because if you know about it, then you know about it. If you don't, then you don't. Um, the past is the past. But there was a lot of rumors going around, and I didn't want to be any part of that. And if those rumors are true, I definitely didn't want to be a part of that. So I stayed low for a while. Check out my pair. I stayed low for a while because I didn't want to be part of it. And if the rumors were true, I did not want to get mixed up in that crossfire. There might be legal problems, etc., etc. I just didn't want to be any part of that. Any part of that whatsoever. So as you guys know, there's a new website out there. And I'm not going to state its name because I'm loyal to Fish Tank TV. I mean, if you go over to that website, it's, I mean, it's your decision. That's cool. But I'm not going over there from all the drama that happened. I'm not getting mixed up in the drama. Fish Tank TV is um, drama-free now, so... I think I'm going to stay where the drama freeze at. So yeah, Dr. Tim left FishTankTV.com. And I say left because I know he's still on there. Um, I'm not going to give away his page name, but I know he's still on there. Um, I don't know why. If he's got his own site, maybe he's uh, convincing people to come over to his site. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I know he's still on there. Bottom line is the drama's over, and I knew it was going to happen. And if all those rumors are true, I didn't want to be any part of it. And now it's all over. I'm back. Check out my new Rummy Nose Tetris. Alright, enough of the crying. Time to teach you. That's what I do best. Time to teach you about aquariums. And this video is all about the description. Well, the title of this video. How to kill, how to get rid of, how to remove algae in your system. Now, algae. There's many different kinds of algae out there. Now, what is algae? Is it a plant? Yes, it is, but it's also a protist. Protists can be photosynthetic. Um, they're very, very closely related to plants, but protists are very small. And you've got your micro and macro protist. Um, pro macro protists would be the giant kelp forests in the sea. Um, macro algae, such as grapevine, grapevine calerpa, um, chetomorpha, and etc. Now your micro supplements, I mean your micro algae are the green algae you see in pond when there's not a UV sterilizer present. Um, brown algae, I can show you that right now. You can see some brown algae right there on the glass. Many different kind of algae out there from green algae, slime algae, hair algae, um, string algae, and that's just a freshwater species. Now, what al what's the reason for algae and why are they there? Are there good algaes and are there bad algaes? Algae is just nature's way of fixing problems. Now, do not get me wrong. There are some bad algaes out there. I think in freshwater, blackbeard is the worst algae. In saltwater, um, red tide algae is probably the worst. So what do algaes do? Algaes basically remove nitrate and phosphate and all the nitrogen cycle, every level of it. And you got to think, if there's a problem in nature, algae is going to come. And algae is going to get rid of that problem. And once that problem has gone, the algae goes away. And a good example of that is diatoms. Now, there's freshwater and saltwater diatoms. If you don't know what diatoms are, they're like a brown algae. And what it is, it has a two-part silica, silica shell with the upper and lower part that fits together like a shoebox. Some cells live together individually, and some are in big clusters. Now... <clears throat> um, diatoms, they're basically, you find them in freshwater and saltwater, but you find them all the time in saltwater when you first set a saltwater tank up. It's cycling the tank. It's, you got to think, your tanks are got to be in balance. And algae is just another way to get your tank into balance. Once your tank becomes balanced, your algae should go away. Some good ways to prevent algae is not overfeeding your fish. Um, reduce the lighting on your tank and water flow you can see my system right now is six foot long and it doesn't have that much water flow and I'm about to fix this this Saturday my intake my return pump right there the pipe that's coming in the vinyl tube and I'm gonna have that go into a spray bar and the spray bar is gonna have several holes drilled into it so I can equally distribute 
water through the tank. And if your water is just standing still like mine is for the most part, except for over here where you can see the plants, they're kind of moving due to the water pump. Now, I want to have that all over the tank because my plants, let me get an up-close view. Like on this Luigia repens right here, um, you can see it's lost its, its red because I need to dose my iron. And I'm getting iron this Saturday too, I've ordered it. You can see I took clippings off it right here. And you can see it's getting brown. And the reason for that is because it's so much, like, you see stuff floating in the water? Well, my tank has been off for a filter for like a week or so. And stuff's been stagnant. And stagnant water can lead to this. And uh, it's just really bad. And i got to fix this. I'm going to fix it by getting some Odo catfish, um, some stuff to clean the leaves off, and having water flow on my tank. And you see the new growth, which is growing faster, is not getting as much, but it's, slart, it's slow, slowly starting to get some. You can even see it starting to selling on the rocks over here in the Java fern. It's just not looking good. If you guys are into reefs, you really know what I mean. Water flow is key to the reef so corals can get their food and detritus doesn't form. Well, it's the same thing with fresh water and algae. The more water flow you have, the less algae you'll find. Now, in high water flows, if you have a really high um, light, source or really nu high nutrient source you'll find some stringy algae which clings to the rock which doesn't float away when uh, there's high water flow. There are also types of macro algae. You can click right here on the screen to check that out. That's a, um, I got some videos on that and check these links out and it can really show you some good tips on macro algae. Now what macro algae is, it's a bigger form of life but it's still an algae, it's still a protist and it's doing basically what the smaller algae does but in a different form. Now how do you get rid of algae? To get rid of algae, you need to learn how to grow algae, and then you can do the exact opposite. There's a couple things algae thrive on. The first source is light. Algae love light. I remember, it is a photosynthetic protist, so light is essential. There are some types of algae out there that are non-photosynthetic, but we won't go into them too much. Another source is nutrients. Large fish such as this, and any kind of fish, can poop out a lot of waste. So how do you get rid of it? A couple different methods. And one, you can, uh, you can cut back on your feeding on your tank. You might also have a heavy bio load. If your bio load is too much for your system to handle, then you might have to cut back on your bio load. Maybe you can get a bigger tank or sell some fish. You can also cut back on your lighting. But my favorite is adding plants. Plants are natural and they're going to compete with the algaes to get the nutrients out of the water, to get the CO2 out of the water, to absorb the light. Plants are going to remove every level of the nitrogen cycle and phosphates. So that's what algae thrives on and it's going to remove it for you. So on feeding your tank, instead of feeding your tank two or three times a day, if you can, feed them five to six times a day but smaller feeding so they can consume it more. And the way there will be less uneaten food that dissolves and turns into toxins in your tank. Also, if you're overfeeding your tank and you got a problem with the, um, uneaten food, a good idea is to get creatures like this. Cleanup crews. Cleanup crews. You can see a quarry cat going to work. Just trying to find some food to scavenge and make sure it doesn't dissolve. This way it gets breaking down the nitrogen cycle instead of going straight to ammonia. In this tank I've got six quarry cats. Three albinos and three swart size. I'm going to get some more later on. And I'm also going to get some odo catfish and perhaps some snails. That way all the uneaten food and waste gets eaten. Now there are some exceptions out there like blackbeard algae. Now how do you get rid of something like that? With blackbeard algae you just can't stop feeding it or turn out the lights. It'll still grow and it will still thrive in your system. So how do you take out something like that? There are a couple different methods out there such as peroxide or CO2 dosing. People use leaf zone and excel or DIY CO2 to counteract the blackbeard algae, what happens is the blackbeard algae starts turning pink and then it turns red and then eventually it starts to die off. Like I said earlier, I'm not going to dive too much into blackbeard algae. This is just for the basic how to kill slime algae, brown algae as you can see down here on the glass. You see all that? 
That's brown algae, and I think it's a little bit of a mixture of diatoms, too. And I know my tank's not established yet. It's not mature. It's not It's not on cruise control yet, as uh, Mr. Saltwater Tank TV says. Um, it, it's still got a ways to go before it gets on cruise control. And this is just the way of, you know, getting the tank to establish itself. So my overall teaching of how to get over rid of allergies is you got to tackle the problem. Cut back on your light, cut back on your feeding, cut back on your bio load or go to a bigger tank, and get some plants or some kind of chemical media to remove nitrates, phosphates, ammonia, nitrate and that way the basic algaes that are common in the aquarium will get wiped out and if you got blackbeard algae you can do some peroxide dosing and I do not mean put peroxide in your tank, you can take the plants out and d dip them in peroxide or you can introduce stuff like Excel or leaf stone or DIY CO2 to remove your blackbeard algae and now sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't some people have success with it some people do not um, so if you say it doesn't work sometimes it doesn't sometimes it does blackbeard is tricky and that's why I'm not covering it in the video um, so that's how you gotta gotta kill algae say it one more time cut back on your lights cut back on your feeding get some plants more water changes less of a bio load or get a bigger tank you gotta find a balance in your tank and once you find a balance you'll be on cruise control oh yeah and water flow so that's how you get rid of algae guys comment rate subscribe if you got an algae problem let me know I'll help you out as soon as possible